It's uh, well, it's not really round, but I hope some more people will attend. And it, it, it's uh, I do not want to, to make a big uh, uh, presentation here, just just to get some kickstart with with some short short slides what Debian Science is. And you might have seen the statistics uh, about the mailing list because Debian Science organization will happen basically uh, over this uh, Debian Science mailing list. And you see the, the, the effort started in 2005. And uh, until 2007, there was not so much uh, discussion or engagement on this mailing list. But um, I tried to apply this uh, Debian blend stuff to this uh, to the Debian science effort in 2008. And you see um, an increase of the discussion and I think an increase of the activity in this uh, mailing list. And um, we also applied some, some group maintenance for uh, packages because we, we think that uh, there are several scientific packages which are complex and uh, should be rather maintained by more people. And so we have also uh, uh, implemented an Elliot and project where you see you can, uh, here you see, see the commits to this mailing list. There is some very active committer, uh, Stefan. Uh, I, I just uh, get rid of the, the last names because uh, some people told me that this is uh, about uh, yeah, uh, data safety, but whatever. Uh, you know the people from the mailing list if you are involved in it. And here the, we have some discussion of the, the maintainers. So the names are those people who are active on this list and I hope we, we get even more in this concern. Um, Debian Science has developed some so-called meta packages which somehow fit to uh, sciences we are interested in. Here you can see a list. In, uh, in, in my opinion, this Debian Science is uh, something like um, 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 an umbrella or a, a, a chance to kick off for specific science blends. So if you see uh, the biology part, it is basically covered by Debian Med because there is a very strong connection to biology. We have the Debian chemistry. It uh, is basically covered by the work of uh, the DBChem project. And um, there is even something uh, working for, for geography, the Debian uh, GRASS project or Debian GIS which is working on geographical software in general. And m my great hope is that we also get people who are actively working for uh, Debian physics or Debian mathematics project or so, that we can profit from the work of the Debian science project, work together with them, and just get more focus in detailed sciences. But currently, uh, we have not so many people who are actually uh, um, running such a project and we have not yet the manpower. By the way, I, I'm seeing here Debian Neuroscience Cognitive is also some effort uh, of a part of Debian made people. And we have some common science utilities like uh, utilities for data acquisi acquisition, image analysis, statistics, type settings, and, and viewing. Um, these are uh, utilities we, we need for general in science and um, I hope that um, the, the specific sciences just came back on and use this specific stuff. And we have also some development packages in uh, where people just, just uh, found it useful to, to sort out some application which are only needed for, for developing the scientific ap application but not really for the use it for users the just run a, a certain application and do not want the development. Here are some interesting URLs for those who are not knowing what Debian Science might be. And I would like to ask you at first uh, about your opinions of, of the Debian Science project and perhaps everybody can give a short statement. I, I would like to hand around the, the mic and if something remains unclear here in, in the slides, it, it was intended to people who are just know what Debian science is in principle. If, if it's something un unclear, I'm happy to, to make things clear and explain some more. So. Yeah, could you take the mic? 
probably also be useful if people who are involved in Debian Science mm -hmm. or even maintain science-related packages outside of Debian Science could indicate uh, what packages, in general, don't give me a list, but like what area of packages or science in particular they're interested in. Um, yes, yes. Because sometimes that's it's not obvious. That's right. So, Justin, could you keep the mic and, and just introduce yourself? And talk? Okay, um, my name is Don Armstrong. Um, I maintain a few parsley related uh, science packages in Debian, but I maintain a whole slew of them outside of Debian currently, uh, primarily related to bioinformatics uh, and other biology related uh, subjects, specifically a whole slew of R packages. Um, so that's what I do that's related to Debian science. Any, any reason why you are keeping them outside? Um, the main reason why I haven't brought them inside of Debian yet is a primarily a factor of time. Oh. Um, they aren't yet of a quality that I would be willing to see distributed in the archive. Um, so I mean, uh, I do have them there, but I, I basically packaged them just enough so that they work for me. Uh, yeah, okay. and, and uh, but uh, it would be interesting if there is uh, a uh, package source somewhere available, if you uh, send a quick email that we can at least have uh, a look yeah. at. Well, uh, now with uh, Dirk and the uh, CRAN to Deb uh, mm -hmm. project, it, they've yeah. pretty much uh, obviated <laughs> what I'd been doing. So uh, <laughs> they've pretty much made a much better packaging set than what I had available. Hi, I'm uh, Chris Walker. I, I work at Queen Mary in the University of London. Um, and previously, my background is in X-ray diffraction, so I um, had an interest in data acquisition and, um, uh, and data analysis. Um, I'm now working for uh, Grid PP, so we have a grid cluster with about 1,400 cores, and we analyze data from CERN. It's running Scientific Linux, which is essentially a Red Hat derivative. Um, that's going to be difficult to change, I suspect, but it, it would be really nice if some of the um, uh, grid middleware was ported to Debian so that on my netbook, for example, I could submit jobs and I could, you know, other people um, running Debian on their desktop could submit jobs even if the, our server actually still end up running Red Hat. Anybody else who wants to? Uh, hi, uh, Enrico Zini. I'm not a scientist myself, but um, I work for meteorologists and I write a lot of software that does things that I don't completely understand. Um, but basically, um, well, archi um, archival weather data or, um, or organizing weather data, kind of um, software to support research on weather. Um, and I, I used also libraries to parse for various kind of formats, uh, and I even wrote a few of those. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm interested in seeing some of those packages in Debian. Uh, that there is a whole lot about geo w libraries or libraries like NetCDF, HDF5. Um, they're all tricky things because they all have their own quirks in, in the way they are packaged, they work, they're linked by different applications and different versions and so on. Um, so yeah, that's all interesting and that's more or less why the data formats and uh, libraries. Hi, I'm Mario Lang. Um, basically, my, uh, as a day job, I, I work for the Technical University of Graz and we are operating uh, currently about five smaller, larger Linux clusters with, with about 700 cores. And we are using Debian for, uh, for the systems. Um, yes, and I'm basically interested in, yeah, uh, as other people uh, so have said, I there are a lot of problems with, with, with uh, compu computational libraries, uh, with, with linking and, and different communication systems, uh, and especially the queuing system problem is, is something else I'd like to get forward on sometimes because we don't really have a functional queuing system in Debian, and that's one of the things that's absolutely required for running a cluster, so you end up uh, yeah, doing doing lots of, of handwork and, and manually installing software, and it would be great if, if we could get this some more standardized ins inside of Debian. Yeah. Uh, 
So, um, hello, I'm uh, Lionel Maman. Uh, professionally, uh, I'm mainly uh, active uh, with uh, proof assistance uh, pro pro uh, pro programs uh, that check uh, validity of uh, proofs. I haven't quite um, so um, my tries uh, to, to get a, a, a few in Debian have mostly uh, 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 petered out uh, because of uncooperative upstreams and uh, negative ones. But uh, in Debian science, uh, what I mo uh, mostly do uh, is uh, uh, mentor and uh, s uh, sponsor uh, Filippo Rosconi, uh, who has um, uh, who is preparing a few uh, p p p a few p packages uh, around mass uh, spectrometry uh, and uh, also a bibliographical reference uh, extractor. My name is Francisco Rivas. I work for a research group uh, which are interesting is uh, to understand the evolution of the plus. Uh, actually, we uh, we are not involved in Debian science, but we do some studies about mailing lists, uh, fact tracker systems, and source code uh, management to get in um, the committer, the most important committer, the most active in committer in the community, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, we use Debian uh, to understand how, we, how it is growing and, and evolving. Hi, I'm Diego. Um, while I'm not involved in any scientific thing yet, uh, I have some interest on what happens in Debian in this particular site. Uh, in the anecdotic part, I was actually able to do this trip thanks to my university, uh, I don't know, uh, school director or whatever, uh, actually using Debian for scientific uh, work. So just uh, an effort. I'm Drake Diedrich. I used to maintain DQS, so I apologize for us not having a queuing system anymore. I couldn't get it to build anymore. It survived two full Debian releases without me rebuilding the binaries because the ones I built the first time worked. And that was non-free software. It evolved and turned into SGE, came back with a whole bunch of Java dependencies, and we didn't have a working Java for it yet. So we don't have a queuing system. Yeah, I'm Michael Bank. And I primarily work on chemistry software, um, yeah, and doing the Debian projects. Hello, um, I, I think in in the last year some some interesting things in the mailing list came up um, about how we should handle, for instance, references. So, it, it, do we have made up any opinion about how we could do this? Has there been some suggestion that currently? It is uh, more or less common practice that people add um, references to, to their software inside the so long description also because you, you need, if, if you are a scientist and write some software, you need some, some, some quotes for, for your software and so on. But these this, um, uh, this, this quotes are not really um, a structured information and we, we are thinking about um, adding an, an extra file in the uh, user share doc or something like that. Th have you followed the, the, the discussion or have you any opinion how to solve this problem or so? Nobody. Oh. Yeah, well actually I wanted to get back to that. Hello? Okay. Yeah, I wanted to get back to that. I just got reminded yesterday, but um, I haven't reviewed the um, discussion yet, and I think we should really go forth with it at some point. But there were quite a few different ideas or opinions how to um, do that, and it might be a bit difficult. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it would be nice if if um, we could assemble references for programs in some central bib tag file or so, um, so that people can check out the papers that are 
appropriate for this program and then get the background. But it, that's like a wish list, but I think it's really important that we get the proper citations um, in, in some structured thing because um, there's a lot of uh, scientific projects which um, seem to be like sort of sideware that, that means that they're free software but people say well you're required to cite this uh, paper or so if you use it and if we could tell them like okay in Debian it's required if you do or like let's say not required but there's like an informal policy of having this citation file or something and then users are supposed to look there and then cite it and so we could get around this copyright involving citation problem if we just decouple it and say, well, we have it there, and so it's there, and it doesn't have to be in the license. And so I really mm -hmm. think it's an important issue, and it would be nice if we could converge on, on some sort of form. I think it was mostly about, like, should it be bib tag, should it be plain text, and it would be nice if we could converge, I guess. Is there any other opinions about that? I was just gonna say, I mean, there are, there are essentially, as I see it, two, isu two issues. There's one, what, um, if you are going to cite a piece of software, um, you want to, e to easily and quickly find the best thing to cite. Um, and then it might also be useful to have some references for how to use it and other what other people have done with it. Um, so th and, and that, I think, is a technical problem. The other problem is the social problem of um, when should you cite it. And that that in, in many ways I think is a separate discussion and that to some extent we can say well it's up to the ethics and the, the pr standard practice of people in that scientific field um, and I think I mean the, personally I think the first one is more critical to address first the, the technical problem that's what we do in Debian but I think it's also useful to have a have a discussion about when when one should cite a, pr a particular program I mean, the other thing that's really useful as well is to have those citati citations, especially when a program encodes multiple methods, and it, it makes it very much easier. For example, R has uh, almost in all of its uh, documentation files tells you precisely from which paper the method or the function you're calling was written up in. So if it's not clear from reading the documentation and it's not clear from reading the source code what it's doing, you can go back to the original paper uh, and, and see what's going on. So I mean, so both in context of citing the original paper, but also in terms of additional citations where appropriate to papers that explain what's actually going on. So it usually I find, at least in my area, we usually cite the small paper that announces the uh, the project. So like R, you would, I forget which citation you would use, but it's some citation in 1998 or something that um, introduces the R project. Um, and so it tells you exactly which one we suggest that you cite R in your method section, you know, by s putting a citation. Um, I think a lot of the software does that where they s we suggest or works to that effect instead of we require you to cite. I mean, and maybe to, to uh, if we run into upstreams where that's a problem, to pull a couple of these examples out to, to say, okay, look, these are famous examples, which are s these papers are cited, uh, R, for example, has to be cited at least a, probably 100,000 times by now. Um, and it works if you do it this way. And there's enough community pressure behind it. Um, so are people also citing these um, secondary papers for R for every package? Or is it really just citing the R paper then? It, it depends. So in my case, if the standard method is if the package is one that is part of the base of R, and you're not making a very explicit use of it, then yeah, I'll just cite R itself. However, if I'm doing work, uh, for example, that specifically involves a sub package, so I've done work on uh, genetic association, and there's a package called SMP SOAK that actually does the test that I'm using, um, then I cite that specifically in addition to R. Well, my concern is, well, not concern, but Apparently now we have this really nice R package doing thing, and um, it would be interesting whether you could also like automatically extract the proper citation as well. 
and and put it into a user share doc that package as a citation um, or well well if, if you have to do it like manually and figure out what the citation is and then that like sort of makes this whole automatic R package building a bit uh, less usable, at least in concern with the citation thing. Yeah, I think R has the fields in the documentation to tell you what the citations are. I just, they may be in div tech, but I'm not sure exactly what format they're in. I'd have to go and, D Dirk would know, but he's not here, so I can't ask him. Uh, once we are in the, in the documentation issue, uh, I've observed that quite frequently we have um, in the upstream source uh, PDF documentations of the package, but no license, no source code, whatever. And it's always rejected by FTP master because uh, no source code available. Um, it is quite a stupid I issue in my opinion because uh, in, in most cases auto do not really think about providing their text sort or the PDF sources generated out of an open office document or whatever. And uh, in, in, in principle, you, you could uh, make some PDF to text uh, and then provide the text and, as an ASCII form and then is it the source or is it not the source? And what's your opinion about this? So I mean, I think here one of the most important things is as early as possible try to get the upstream authors to provide whatever they use to build the PDF mm -hmm. and license it under the same license as the paper. If it's a Word document, that's kind of annoying, but we can edit Word documents. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, th maybe you modify it a little bit, but even in the case of PDF documentation, you often want to change it to fix it in cases where it doesn't match. I mean, I know in my case, I write documentation sometimes for things that I use, mm -hmm. uh, and what actually the code does diverges from the PDF file that I have. In the case of journal articles, it's a little weird, but even then you still have the submitted file that you submitted to the journal instead mm -hmm. of the published version of the journal article. It's also uh, quite fre frequently that you you the, your uh, package end up in, in, in non-free or whatever because you want to provide the documentation, but and this is I, I really hate this this issue because we, we it, it just makes trouble and without uh, no no real use for our users. Yeah, I mean in some of those cases too, though you can rip out the doc yeah. and provide. Yeah, but you want to provide the docs for the users. Oh yeah, but rip out the documentation and provide the documentation in a separate non-free package. Yeah. So I mean that's the yeah that's what we're currently doing, but it's yeah uh, it's suboptimal, and the only way to fix it is to get mm. authors to be aware of the issue because mm. it's one of those things that most people now are aware of the need for free software mm. uh, in academia, but sometimes they don't think about free documentation because it's only now that there's been such a huge push for uh, open publications. I mean it's really only in the past three years or so mm. that we've seen the rise of open publication. Mm as big as it is now with the BMC and POS journals. Uh, yeah, in in most cases, I think the, the reason is that authors, uh, authors of uh, software and documentation do not even think about applying the, the, this. And, and perhaps we, we, we find some framework letter we, we could, could just send out to them to, to s put some there to that no, not everybody has to invent the, the same letter always. Right, yeah, and I guess this too is as soon as they've licensed the PDF correctly, if they write back and tell you, you know, I have no idea where the doc file is, mm -hmm. then just put that in the copyright file. I mean, that's a, an example of a binary that there is no source existing in the mm -hmm. planet for it anymore. Yeah. So uh, then it's uh, sort of free, but suboptimal. Mm -hmm. so, so that should be fine for Maine, you think? Uh, I, I believe so. I mean, it's uh, not the question whether, whether we think, but it's, it's the question yeah. whether FDP must but think. But so. if the author writes back and says that, yeah, we, we looked for this source, we cannot find it. Mm -hmm. uh, if we find it, we'll send it to you or something like that, mm -hmm. then that's a case that I think. And he obviously licenses it under free software license as well. Uh, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess a lot of problems is also legacy um, documentation. Like there's a lot of PDFs from the 90s or 80s um, back then and well, doesn't get properly updated and stuff. And then, yeah, it's a pain. Yeah, uh, I think there's some some other, I other issue I observed uh, in scientific work because I've heard from from Sanger Institute, which is a large institute of biological research in Great Britain, that um, they don't use uh, our stuff we provide in Debian Mate because uh, they want to stick to certain versions of programs. 
they, they have Debian packages because they have even three uh, Debian developers working at the Sanger Institute, but they want to stick to a very certain version which is exactly able to reproduce the, the, the results. And it might happen that this version is not even in any Debian stable release because well, it was used so at some other point in time. And do you see any chance to provide uh, some Debian packages with, with a certain version for over a long time? Yeah, s snapshot is, I, I, I know Debian snapshot, but I, I, I have no idea how we could help the users to, to get it with uh, more simple than uh, just uh, pinning it to a certain version. On One of the snapshot. things that would maybe be really, really useful is to have some of the users of these packages produce test sets mm -hmm. that are expected to produce a particular result. Mm -hmm. And so if they stop producing that result, mm -hmm. um, then, th I mean, they may not even need to be distributed in Debian itself but some sort of method of testing so that they can say, oh yes, these versions are all good, they all do the exact same, they reproduce the results we had previously. Uh, and when they start diverging, then they can ask about it. But outside of that, the only thing to do is to stick to a version. I know I do that sometimes. When I publish a paper, I fork, uh, branch out the repository mm -hmm. that is producing the data in that paper. Mm -hmm. and everything else continues on a pace in the tree, but the stuff for that paper gets locked in place because mm -hmm. the people writing the paper have to write based on a consistent set of data, mm -hmm. so. In terms of making experiments reproducible, um, besides specific version of packages, sometimes you have a specific version of dependencies to be you know, tracked as well, and even specific version of build dependencies in case of you use libraries where functionality is implemented like um, templates in C++. Um, there is DH build info that will store in a package the information about the build dependencies used to build it. Um, and there is report bug that can generate a report of all the uh, dependency versions of a pa version of dependencies of a package installed in the system. So I is it, could it be a good idea to create a little script that gathers all the DH build info information of the packages currently installed and the, and the versions and creates a little text file that you can attach to the research, say, well, I, I did this with this whole tool chain. So if I need to reproduce it, this is exactly what I used and the architecture and so on. I, if you're really concerned about reproducing things, I, I that is something that comes to my mind. It's interesting that you're asking about snapshotting private repositories and testing because I've been working for two years now on a project, Dev Marshall, and I've got an um, intern putting together the test suite for it, which snapshots and stages and tests software so that you could find out which versions pass tests. You could go back in time and pick up you know, the, release on the release of Debian Unstable on this day that you kept. So if you installed from your own private snapshots, this would then be able to provide them back to you. And it, we're also building a test suite for it. Yeah, in, my, in my opinion, these are uh, all interesting solutions for people like us who are very fit uh, maintaining a Debian system, but it's uh, not so comfortable for a general user to, to apply this, so if you have any other ideas. I mean, for, for most general users, surely if they use the Debian provided packages, mm -hmm. they can say we use package X on in Lenny. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's if you're if you're doing something slightly different, it's, it's surely the the particular issue. And and I think I mean what what's been suggested sounds like a good idea and might be worth putting on the wiki as a you know this is what you can do. This is an example of good practice. And if you submit a paper, it can go in the supplementary information that goes along with the paper for exactly what we're using. Yeah, but but uh, sometimes the real life is uh, that this this uh, version that the user want is is not in Lenny. He has uh, stick to a pre Lenny release with some privately built Debian package or whatever. To uh, uh, the person who does all that for that user, mm -hmm. or even if it's the user themselves, uh, at that point knows enough about Debian to at least 
snapshot those mm -hmm. packages that they've built in the build system. So maybe just making it, like you said, on the wiki, uh, better available so that users who are doing that can be pointed out, okay, these are the steps that we recommend that you, you do to be able to reproduce the system that you've generated. But also I think that, I mean, certainly we want to have everything in Debian, but if it makes sense, we could also at least provide binary packages um, from a different version if the source is in Debian for like maybe on Elliot or wherever. Um, I think that's that's an appropriate usage of Elliot, um, providing backports or providing a specific version of user asks for it and they are not able to um, build them themselves uh, if they need it for their research. So just saying, well, it's not in Lenny, uh, you're lost or yeah, I think it should be possible for us to do that. I think too, what it also make it easier is when we uh, complete the resupport of snapshot.debian.org. Uh, so once that we get that machine to do that, um, so you can at any moment in time go to back to any version of a package that we've distributed ever. Um, that'll be a, a good thing. That'll help make this easier. Okay, if there are no, no further opinion on this topic, I uh, have some, some question about the stuff here I developed in, on this Spux page. Uh, the, 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 the bugs overview um, just fuel, uh, fuels the relevant meta package and I tried to find some, some measure how many bugs are in, in, this, in the dependencies of these meta packages. And it turned out that the, the measure I found is not really helpful because we have many, many uh, bugs. This is, this is not the number of bugs, this is some measure uh, because the, the, the uh, release critical bugs are m multiplied by 10 and so uh, to, to make sure that the re release critical bugs are uh, even uh, higher uh, or makes, makes even more noise on, on, on the, this list and the wish list bugs are uh, quite low priority. It, um, but it turned out that um, nearly every meta package gets uh, this red line, uh, and so it, it's not really that helpful. We have uh, here in, in meteorology are not so many bugs, uh, but I, I have no real idea how how we could really make a reasonable measure to to attract people if there is something really wrong and uh, perhaps you have some, some good ideas how we can do that. Here is a list how, how it is uh, calculated. So we have in the me meteorology uh, section, we have no critical grave or serious bugs. We have um, three important bugs in, in only suggested package. So it's uh, only not so relevant. And we have uh, a few normal or minor bugs. In, in all the other, if you look at um, whatever, Statistics is not so crowded, so we have s some better overview. We have. Can can you see? Uh, is anybody able to see this? Yeah. I, I think the best solution is we, we crowd here around this table and look at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the bo best solution because it's this is just does not work. Or, or you look at your uh, at your laptop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that prompt can. What do you want? Uh, it is it is released. Uh, uh, it is two one thousand twenty four. Okay. But the, the screen is just shifted.
on the in the bottom of of the page I have also some uh, footnote where uh, it is explained how exactly this uh, bug measure is is calculated but i'm I'm not really sure that is uh, really reasonable because as I said we have most of the meta packages get the red light and uh, this actually makes not much sense and does not really motivate people to, to look at this page. Um, currently, I, I think, uh, or at least my hope was that chemistries go to the just chemistry page and I'm personally using it in the Debian made project uh, quite frequently to, to look what uh, packages are buggy and where, where they should uh, work. And I, I think it, it is, um, if you look only on, on the page you are interested most, it, it, it works, but if you are generally looking at it, it makes not much sense. So perhaps you just have a look in, 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 in a quiet minute and, and build your opinion on it, and uh, we will not find a solution in, 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 in 10 minutes here, I, I think. But at least uh, um, I was able to show you the problem we have. The the uh, URL is http uh, blends dot elliot dot debian dot org science and from from this you have links to tasks and bugs pages where you can click. Oh, yeah, yeah, I pasted the Debcon channel. Debcon channel. In a lower room, maybe. It's, I think it's also linked to from the Debian Science Wiki page. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, definitely linked from there. Probably Googling for Debian Science might help as well. I, I'm just posting the, the uh, entry page for Debian Science as well. Yeah, you can also click on these task pages. One of the things it doesn't doesn't currently do, and would be useful if it does, although I realize time is finite, um, is um, for the for physics. I realized that there were about eight programs that implemented MATLAB-like uh, functionality, okay. and so I've split those out as a separate meta package because physics was including them, engineering was including them, maths was including them, and it seemed silly. Uh, but you don't then list include the bugs in those dependent upon packages. Um, I in that list of physics bugs, um, and it might might well be useful if you did. So, so you mean if we if we look in the sense as common science utilities that you say uh, s uh, science MATLAB like in in this in yeah. this context? Okay. But you're really talking about a sub physics meta package, right? It's not no, a, not a no general no. Applica applicable. No, I, I, I think I think what you mean is that uh, the physics task could just. Uh, depend from science MATLAB-like, and mathematic tasks could depend from science MATLAB-like because okay, it's yeah, a general right. tool, not only for physics. It precisely, precisely, and data acquisition similarly. Yeah, this makes sense. Could could you send me uh, please a list of these MATLAB-like uh, uh, programs? The, the, there, the, there should be a, a meta package. I yeah. thought I'd created one. Yeah, Sometime. yeah. Do you just, or, or you, okay. you can do it, or, or but because I don't know all these uh, MATLAB-like packages, I don't. Uh, I only uh, know Oct Octave, but I don't know the others. It the, it's the numerical computation package uh, list um, thing in in your um, on the on the bugs page. Could, could you post the exact uh, link where you are looking for? Okay, so if it's blends alioth debian org slash science slash bugs slash numerical computation dot html. Or it's one of the links on the left, yeah, that's it. So this. You mean you know data language? Precisely. That's Mas, or, or Octave is there? I, I know Octave. What what one? Yeah, 
what are the other ones you mean for MATLAB like well, all, all of those are, are MATLAB like I mean okay. the, for example IPython yeah, okay. um, combined with matplotlib provides similar a Python like functionality that's that similar to MATLAB the GNU data language looks like it's a um, um, provides similar functionality to um, IDL yeah. um, okay. and one of the things I, I have worked on in the past, as, as you know, is um, is the wiki to try and improve that, and indeed putting them back into your meta packages to try and improve the um, the visibility of all of these nice, cool packages that are in Debian. Yeah, sure. And that that actually is one of the things I think we really w that I put a quite a lot of effort into. Um, I think ultimately, um, and I'm glad Enrico is here. Um, the his tags are the way to ultimately the way to go but I haven't worked out exactly the way to use his tags to implement, to, um, for a scientist looking at things, saying, ah, oh, I've heard of this, pa this non-free package that does something like that might be interesting. What are the free packages that mm. are available? What mm. are the free packages in Debian? Um, and, you know, a list of packages that are similar and related. Um, I mean, there's a great list on the chemistry website uh, chemistry wiki page of different uh, drawing packages and there are about 20 or 30 in Debian which perhaps is too many but there are a lot of them are aimed at different function different bits of functionality um, so some are 2d drawing packages some are 3d some have got crystallographic information and so on and it and some um, have integration with Ab Initio packages and it's, it's really if you know rough if you've got a vague idea that you're looking for something but are not quite sure exactly what um, what it is you or you you know what you want but you don't want to read the descriptions of 20 or 30 packages to find what does exactly what you want it's really you know, um, it'd be nice to have some way of doing that slightly better yeah right we should I should really get to it I know <laughs> I, uh, that, that I suck well, I always wanted to do these package tags and, and think about it, but I haven't really gotten around it, and I hope I'll get around here, finally. Um, just one thought occurred to me. Um, could we also have, or maybe you just said it and I did miss it, could we have, is it possible to have like package tags which says like, like S or like MATLAB? Like, um, is, is that ethically okay to suggest non-free uh, packages people might want to search for as a user? Um, Enrico, what do you think? Um, DevTex perfectly supports absolutely controversial tags. Um, for example, um, Miriam Ruiz is providing um, parental guidance tags for games rating extremely controversial things like violence or sexual references or religious things. Uh, the way we do it is as an external tag source. You can edit etc deptex sources dot list and add extra tag sources to it, or you can install files in etc deptex sources dot list dot d, which make deptex include that, um, and then deptex will merge everything together. So you can have you can put like in Debian science site something that just says, well, this is like MATLAB, this is like Microsoft Office, and so on. And then um, make uh, in the meta package, you just include that bit of configuration and, and put it in there. Although it could be arguable that, um, I mean, I if that doesn't fit in Debian, you can just put the package in non free that installs the required. I mean, if you think that that would be too much involved with proprietary software and not quite the aim of Debian, it's just a matter of making like a 10 kilobyte package in non-free that installs the data file with the tags and adds the source to etc deptex sources dot list dot d and that's it and then you can really put whatever you want and then it get it gets merged with the regular tags for that package or how does it does okay, it cool. gets merged with the rest of the tags and uh, it everything that uses up to xapian index will find it uh, everything which reads the merged the data set in varlib deptex will find it the only tools that won't find it is those who get the data from the packages file, but they shouldn't. They okay. should just get data from other places. Yeah, I'm just wondering, uh, is, is there any comments about should we include it directly in main, or is that 
inappropriate what you other thi people think we do science, or is there any opinions about it? Uh, uh, sorry, another thing, you may want to do it task specific, um, because there may be conflicting proprietary software names or proprietary software used in different ways in different fields, I don't know. Yeah. From a purely legal standpoint, I, I can't imagine a problem from nature. Yeah, certainly, it's not a legal problem. It's yeah, more it's ethic ethically a problem, I would say. Like, should yeah. we should we promote S or MATLAB or something? I, I think when we're promoting it as a replacement, I, in my opinion, anyway, it's it's not ethically as challenging. Uh, it's when we're, um, I mean, it's when we're. Usually it's on already the in the package description, I'd say, right? Right, and yeah, and in those cases, I, I can't see a problem with it. Okay. But certainly it's nice to have the possibility of doing it. Yeah. Like uh, it, it, it just occurred to me that this could be a distribution-wide thing, including stuff like OpenOffice replaces Microsoft Word and our eyes, we sort of thing, yeah. Um, w w and and it, it can just be one package in non free with this information that can just be you know, and it Debian game team may want to add to it. Um, it's just a matter of saying Reduce who's coordinating yeah. this. Uh, we can do it, have a look. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not too interested in driving this, but I can get patches and put them together if people feel like. One thing I found when I was trying to categorize packages is that I, I mean, some I, I'm a physicist by tra training in crystal, um, with a background in crystallography, so that area I knew something about. But I, I looked at the tags that were available, and I was convinced that they weren't quite detailed enough for what I thought, you know, for, for the, a detailed categorization. But I couldn't work out what the tags one should be using are, and. Um, um, across the whole of science and, and a consistent way of doing that. And perhaps we can have some discussions either now or over lunch when Enrico, who understands tags, is here, um, and we who understand the science, and, and work out whether the tags that are currently available are, are sufficient um, for what to, to get a good categorization. Um, I mean, what, one of the examples is there's a tag, there's a physics tag. Do we tag software that does physics, or do we tag software that's useful for physics? And you know things like the MATLAB-like software. Ma MATLAB is not physics. MATLAB is is maths. Now there might be specific um, physics libraries which one would want to tag physics. But um, and again, there's some parallel there's, um, libraries which I think are probably tagged both physics and chemistry. And I. I I couldn't work out what the answer was, and there wasn't sufficient documentation in the tags to, to give me an answer to that. And I, um, you know, came a bit unstuck. So it would be nice if we had some some discussions and um, on that and worked out where we could go. Um, uh, one thing to keep in mind is uh, we don't need a good categorization; we need a useful categorization. So it's not an effort in being comprehensive. Um, there was a, uh, we came out with a proposal of um, some first approximation that will tag like MATLAB stuff as stuff for doing computation in science or something like that. But I can't find the email and I blame myself for not having Okay, science modeling, science data acquisition, science plotting, science biography, science publishing, that kind of follows the workflow of publishing a paper. And that was kind of an approximation, kind of task specific. It's categories that created not by the intention of um, doing a proper taxonomy of science, but to support someone who has a practical problem of writing a paper. And therefore, you say, well, I, I want to write a paper, I want to do modeling. W this set of tags will at least tell me what I can look into for that stage. And maybe it can cross-reference with other tags for physics when appropriate. But at least you see software for modeling, and then you can apply 
you are looking at maybe 100 packages instead of 20,000, and, and that's a big, big step. The rest can be done with packaging, can be done with package descriptions, yeah, with, with tags or package descriptions uh, according to, but that, that, that already helps a lot. Just saying that we maybe should um, stop discussing or just quickly doing package tags, but um, it's only like eight minutes left, so can after you, we move on to the next topic. I was going to suggest this might be an opportunity to use citations as your tags. You know, every program that implements the algorithm of a certain paper can have a reference to that paper as a citation, and then when you're looking for something that implements that paper, it pulls up a list of packages. Yeah, but that might get a bit crowded unless you uh, it has a D D O I. Um, then it's rather easy maybe to have it as a package tag, but there is some software which you can just reference. You have to reference by name, author, and uh, URL. Yeah, and, and then it gets, maybe the t package tags get a bit crowded, I don't know, but we could think about it. Maybe we should pick Enrico's brain later on at DevConf and uh, move on to whatever Andreas has done. I have, I have some, some last thing. I, I just poke, posting a, um, another link in IRC about the task page uh, because I, I want you to, to have a look at screenshots because I think this is a really nice, uh, oops, a nice thing. You can go to, to any of these tasks. Uh, for instance, I go to uh, what we had here. It was um, numerical computation and we see the task page shows uh, screenshots of the, the, the program and I would like you to, to look at those pages where uh, there is a upload screenshot button and start the program, upload the screenshot to make this page more, more living and attract more people. So everything is there, you, can, you see where the screenshot is available and where not and this link leads you uh, exactly to the upload page for screenshots. Maybe we can have like a list of recommended stuff, like what Enrico said, using DH build info, doing screenshots, like some stuff which is not necessarily in Debian policy, but might make sense in all over science so that these task packages get more useful. Um, well, DH build info is not for that, but, uh, but anyway. Um, you oh, but by the way, you can also uh, use depth tags here. I think in this case, the depth tags are all sets, or at least some depth tags are set if you go on this, uh, on the example, but in case some depth tags are missing, there is also a, a yellow button where you can go depth tagging or so. If you see such cases, just go for it. Okay. You are the experts on, on this uh, package and you can, are the best takers for this. Okay, I think Enrico said he has some more to discuss. Uh, yeah, I, I have a few more technical issues. Since I'm not a scientist myself, I just practice uh, the work for scientists. Uh, I noticed a few technical issues that um, are could be special to uh, science packages that I don't know if you're interested in, in discussing or if there's any special behavior like package namespaces. That is, that is Debian has a single package namespace and I've noticed like packages for sequencing chunks of DNA molecules, whatever, with extremely common names like combine, I don't know, something like that. And I started getting worried, like, okay, then I can combine DNA sequences, I can combine bridge blocks. And uh, the more software we start to get in, the more it's likely to have package conflicts. And if there's a way to, um, I don't know, that that could be an issue that, that Debian Science could be I interested in. Are you talking in. about package name Package names or, or file name spaces? File name space. Well, yeah. Executable file name space right, is also those an are issue. A problem because oh every yes. scientist obviously thinks that he's the one or she's the one doing the combined uh, program and nobody else would ever come so that's not around doing that. And I have two also two other topics I'd like to raise quickly. One is we're mostly dealing with fringe packages, uh, pa fringe like packages that not many people are using, uh, which may have um, special properties like is it does it make sense to um, look at architectures and uh, not have a supercomputing software uh, waste time on ARM uh, build demons or be prioritized low, have a lower priority or deciding that it's a best effort to build it on ARM so it, uh, 
the fact that it's been built on ARM won't prevent the package to go to testing or something like that, or security implications or lack thereof. We don't want to bother the security team. Or, I mean, Debian can even say we don't provide security support for stuff that sequences DNA. So the security team doesn't have to bother and users don't put a DNA sequencers to get input from an open port on the internet. Um, issues more practical, not strictly scientific, but that could be common to scientific packages. I want, I want to raise the last point because um, in the beginning, um, batch queuing systems came up and maybe we could have a small buff, unofficial buff scheduled at some point later in DevConf where we talk about um, what makes sense in, in maintaining this. I mean, I used to push grid engine into Debian, but I don't really maintain it right now. I don't really use it right now. But if people, I mean, there's certainly some people who have like experience with batch queuing systems and um, we could maybe have a buff, what, what makes sense, and then uh, if, if people are interested, we can try to organize that. So you can contact me or try to figure it out. Yeah, so we, we have to finish, I think, and so thank you for your attendance, and see you perhaps in some buff or some other unofficial discuss discussion. And let's write up something for Debian Science also from this. If we're proposing a, a buff, which I think is a good idea, can we perhaps have the discussion now while yeah. we're all here about yeah. when. Register one every event and mail to schedule at maybe at the press conference or something. Not me, so you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it would be interesting for sure, but somebody has to do the work as, as always. You know the principle. And, and one last point, so the science, it's obviously a fringe effort, and so um, there's a danger of packages getting lost or the maintainer going away, as we noticed just before the last release, and I, I, I did made, had some efforts to try and um, say, look, th this package has got some bugs um, that, that are release critical, and w one package in particular, there was a new upstream release um, that didn't make it into Debian, and um, it would be nice to do that a li little bit more continuously so that we don't end up in with a big rush just before the release when the maintainer's gone away and we're scrambling around trying to get an old version patched up. So if we can, if people who have interest on, in packages can keep an eye on them and you know, post bugs and set post to the mailing list saying this package, you know, I'm struggling with this package, there's a much newer version come out. Um, is the maintainer around, or if not, is there somebody else who's around that can um, do something about it, or do it yourself? You know, people do it themselves. That would be useful. I think the next the next uh, event should have just started now, but the speaker left the room. <laughs> <laughs>